Kissa. My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. Water cup, which team I win the championship this season. Yo, Issa. Bubba Banda, if a school I go finish the league and beat now. Which you I go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. On a sunny afternoon at the Kingston headquarters of the Sportsmax Studios, we are kicking off with some schoolboy football in Jamaica as action was live on your home of champions over the weekend. The first of a doubleheader was a Zone A clash on Saturday as St. Catherine-based Eltham High School went head-to-head -head against the Noon Park Technical. That match played at Calabar High School and we have the highlights. These highlights are brought to you by KFC, it's finger licking good, and water, land of good and water. Here are the highlights now. Kick off by Eltham in to get the second half going. A shot coming in from far, not much work for Grant who was really good for the day. He had a bit of work to do a few times. Eltham made a lot of work. And uh, Clark started. Paulis, that was the first shot he had of the game. He was pretty good. Eltham, they were, of course, knocking at the door for a whole entire game. McKinley had a shot. It was over the top. That one was very close to going in by Headley. Uh, this was a moment though that Eltham got onto the scoreboard, a lovely ball in, falling to the feet of Paulis, and he made pretty much good work of that. I mean, not the most powerful shot, but yeah, did take a deflection it looked like, but nonetheless, it goes down on the sheet as his goal and he takes it. A lot of confusion in front of Clark. Clark disappointed with that one again Eltham they kept pressing a really good save from Clark that shot low coming in from Antonio Ferron one of the substitutes and he had more work to do when Reed took a shot it was our sports max at moment and yeah a really good performance from Clark despite conceding twice he was really brilliant for the noon park Eltham, though, they continue to wreak havoc all over the Danun defense. Another powerful shot by their captain, wide of the mark, Santana Hetley. Here's where the second goal came from Paulis. A good ball in and easily converting was Reed. High over everyone else and got his first goal this season. Coming off the bench and providing. The confirmed score, 2 0 for his Eltham team. And after that, there wasn't much left but for the referee to say, that's it. And confirm another three points and another clean sheet for Eltham. Let's take a look now at the statistics full time 2 0. 18 attempts, seven of them on target for Eltham versus the three on target from eight from four to noon. Both fouls, 18 fouls shared between the two teams. Three yellow cards, the noon over one for Eltham. No red card shown in this encounter. Three outsides for the noon versus one for Eltham. And there were 11 corners at the for end of the first half. The noon had more corners. They only added one to that. And Eltham got up to 11 with 62% of possession. The lion's share going to Eltham, 38 to noon. They didn't have much of the ball. And yeah, 2 nil confirmation of that score. Those highlights are brought to you by KFC. It's finger licking good. And water. Land of good and water. Yeah, so Eltham getting the win in that one. Let's hear now from both coaches following the match. I think it has been haunting us all season long. Um, concentration, as they realize we give a goal in 38 minutes in the first half and the same time, exact same time in the second half. So we're not focusing at the end of the game. 
and at the end of the half. I believe we didn't play the type of game that we wanted today and I believe because we had like three games for this week, we had a very hard one on Monday. We played Heidel, then we played uh, Harden on Wednesday. And today again, a very tough one for us today. The underfoot condition as well hampered us a bit. Yeah, so Eltham getting the win there and their goalkeeper Clark having a pretty solid game, although he conceded two goals and um, seven shots on target from uh, Eltham. And several of those stopped uh, brilliantly in goal by Clark for the noon. The day's late fixture featured two former Manning Cup champions, Calabar High and St. Andrew Technical, with uh, that uh, coming down to a rather controversial end. Here's how it went. These highlights are brought to you by KFC. It's finger licking good and water. Land up good and water. With St. Andrew Technical High School on the ball and it was an intense game from the start of it. Shots coming in from left, right and center. Both goalkeepers tested early. Omari Grant was the first who was tested and he made light work of it. And this opportunity was very golden for the St. Andrew Technical side and they weren't able to convert. Rankin though created a few opportunities for himself. This was the first one that made Jaheim Williams work. Taking a deflection and Williams did well to get Jaheim Rankin shot away. St. Andrew Technical High School though, they continue to go forward and it created a lot of opportunities. This one should have been converted, of course, they felt. But Omari Grant doing well to create this opportunity for his team to go ahead. Defensive effort poor, creating ranking an opportunity, and he did so, obliging himself. Getting inside, taking a shot, finding space, catching Jaheim Williams off his line, and going over his head into the goal. One of the better goals we've seen this season. The only goal of the game, of course, came early in that first half, and the Jaheim Rankin, of course was celebrating that one as he should. P Perry, he had a few good chances of his own. The number 21 for Calabar. From there, it was all Calabar high, really. They created the opportunities. One shot, two shots, one over the bar. First one wide. But Stats did have a few moments of their own. They were not as strong defensively as they should have been. Williams did have too much work to do and he was extremely livid with his back line. Stats, the few opportunities they got, they didn't make the most of it. That was the red card there for Alex Xavier Gooding. A rash challenge, getting another yellow and sending him to the showers early. He'll miss the next match. Well, 10 men causing them to have to change their formation, which meant, which meant more opportunities for Calabar High, like this one. Getting this one off, Campbell, but well, McDonald trying to find Campbell on the inside and wasn't able to find it going over the bar. More opportunities, of course, for St. Andrew Technical High. The few that came, putting Omari Grant to work. He was really good in this encounter. Maybe we could have included him in the conversation for Man of the Match. More chances going a begging for Calabar. They did have a few to extend the lead. This one was very close to the end of the game, this free kick from White. But this one, very contentious. A goal, what we thought was the equalizer, Cristiano Brown coming off the bench to deliver this. And they did start to celebrate. And then all of a sudden, the offside flag went up from the second assistant, creating a lot of ruckus. Cristiano Brown, of course, most broken hearted. And that was all that she wrote. The end of that game, 1-0 in favor of Calabar High on their home turf. 16 attempts for them, five of them on target, 10 for St. Andrew Technical High School, three on target, 10 fouls, more fouls going to Calabar, eight for St. Andrew Technical, who had more yellow cards as well as that double yellow card to Xavier Gooding, resulting in a red, two of them yellow for Calabar, no reds, of course. Offside shared, six of them between both teams, Three corners more, well, one more for Calabar High, three to St. Andrew Technical High's two. And the 58% of the possession for Calabar High 
42% plus an agile technical. But yeah, that 1 0 at the top is all that matters at the end of the day. Those are like to brought to you by KFC, it's finger licking good, and water, land of good and water. So St. Andrew Technical almost coming away with a point, but choked out in a dramatic uh, fashion, handing Calabar all three points. Here is coach Philip Williams of St. Andrew Technical, followed by Andrew Price of Calabar. As I said, the tension and the emotion is very high. I mean, it's unfortunate that um, Issa has invested so much, the schools has invested so much in football, and then the poor refereeing is, is taken away from the game. And I think um, that was the worst thing today. Both teams play, play some decent football, and um, I mean, it's, it's good luck in, it look in terms of how the youngsters are playing football, but the officiating need to do better. The, the, the youngsters are resilient. Um, we played this game today without two of our frontline central defenders. One got a red card in the last game and the other has an injury. So we had to patch up the team today and people played in positions that they didn't normally play. But we have a system that we have been playing for the entire season. And once people fit into the system, then the team will play well. And the team showed some depth, some character today to really play against a very good St. Andrew technical team. And they were good enough to get the three points here today. I think that we needed to be a little bit more clinical in front of goal. But our forte is our defensive structure. We have only conceded two goals so far in the entire Manning Cup. So it shows that defensively we are very sound and we want to keep it that way. Yeah, Andrew Price there, the Calabar coach himself, a former championship winning Manning Cup defender with St. George's College many, many years ago. I could say many, many pounds ago, but I'll just say many years ago. Here's a full list of weekend results in the Manning Cup. Heidel 8 0 over Arden High. Danoon Park Tech beaten 2 0 by Eltham. We saw the highlights there, along with the Calabar 1 0 victory over Stats. Camperdown and Vauxhall in a 0 scoreline. Kingston Technical 5 0 over Haile Selassie. Denham Town beaten 10 0 by Tivoli Gardens. Jamaica College 5 0 over Ascot. Excelsior 15 0 over Pembroke Hall High. St. George's College winning over Holy Trinity by five goals to nil. There was a 3-1 win for Norman Manley High over Papine High. It's a Digicel Manning Cup results here. And those were some of the key results from Sati. Uh, Haile Selassie actually repeating Kingston Technical by five goals to nil the other way around there. But um, the TV doubleheader on Saturday, Mariah, uh, played in sloppy conditions. There was a lot of heavy rain in Kingston yeah. on Saturday afternoon. So we saw that Calabar High School uh, venue with a doubleheader. But Coach Philip Williams a little bit disappointed that uh, St. Andrew Technical lost the match. They had a red card and uh, they also had a goal disallowed. Yeah, I can understand when, you know, you're in the heat of a match and, I mean, it's schoolboy footballers, so, you know, tempers can flay and everything, but if I was coach Philip, I would, you know, try to capitalise on the areas that I did not because they had a lot of chances and I felt like Lance, they didn't take those chances. Calibre also, I think they um, had chances that they didn't capitalise on. Luckily, they got that one goal in the back of the net, which secured all three points for them. But for me, um, stats, I won't really feel too hard done. I'll just know that there are areas I need to work on and try to do so in the next fixture. Yeah, um, the issue with that last goal, I think, well, the goal that was disallowed right before the end, I think it was almost the last kick of the match. Um, the stats bench feeling that the linesman's flag, the assistant referee's flag had come too late uh, because uh, the play was already completed and then everyone noticed that the flag had gone up. So Philip Williams is disappointed with that. Having said that, Coach Price would be happy that his Calabar team, without key players, as he had mentioned post-match, were able to get a victory. Jaheim... Rankin strike in the 34th minute was a good, good, good left footed goal. He was uh, striking from a distance. And because the conditions were so slippery, I think, you know, as an attacking minded player, you want to strike shots regularly at the goalkeeper because his movement will be, he'll be handicapped in goal because of the slippery conditions. So if you kick hard shots at goal away from the goalkeeper, it makes it more difficult for him to get close to the ball if it is that the the field is slippery, much yeah. more difficult than if the surface was dry. 
Yeah, and you speak about the, um, you said a really good goal. Uh, one that, you know, I'll be wondering if we'll make our Sportsmax class moment. So um, we'll have to wait until Friday lands to see if this goal is quality enough. But yeah, difficult for the goalkeeper there, especially in the conditions. Um, hopefully they get another match with a dry field. Yeah, so good strike there by Jaheem Rankin, giving Tanabar the 1-0 victory. We go to break. We still have some more schoolboy football to talk about from Trinidad and Tobago. And and uh, still a lot more outside of that to come on the Sports Match Zone today, including what happened in Guyana last night with a massive victory for the St. Lucia Kings over the Guyana Amazon Warriors in the Republic Bank CPL. We'll be back with more on the Sports Match Zone after the break.